Hey guys, we would love to say that faith makes the problems of life disappear. How grand would it be if we could live our lives without hassle, discouragement, or frustration, or disappointments? Sadly, we know this is not the case. We are never removed from the frailty or disappointments of life. One such disappointment is concerning the rapture of the church. Guys, keep believing. Keep believing that the believing will be leaving at any time. God loves us unconditionally, and God wants that same type of love from us in return. Don't just love the Lord thinking the rapture will be on a certain day, and then when it comes and goes, you decide to fall back into despair with a crushing and very disappointed mindset. Don't just love God on the condition the rapture is about to happen on any certain day or anything like it, but love God unconditionally, just like he loves us, whether or not it comes. Whatever comes or does not come, let's keep our eyes fixed by keeping them fixed on Jesus. I just want to say that at the end of this video, I'm going to repost a prophetic word I had given months back. I hope you'll stay long enough to listen. It encouraged me in the Lord, and I pray it would encourage you too. But guys, I'm going to keep looking at this day and every day as being a day that's one day closer to the rapture. And I also look at it like an opportunity for one more person to get saved. That very one could be one of your loved ones. The rapture really is coming and we really are going. Don't lose hope in the God of hope. Guys, we all do go through many times of burdens, trials, hardship, and struggles. There are even seasons where we feel we have been tossed into the fiery furnace of affliction. What does give me strength in my weakened moments in life is remembering the early Christians being burned at the stake and being fed to the lions and, and thinking about the heroes of faith found in Hebrews chapter 11. Even in more recent times, during our lifetime in the 21st century, there have been Christians beheaded for their faith. I pray may God have mercy on us all. But for now, I want to talk about some men found in the Bible that we need to hear about. We all know the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men knew all about fiery afflictions, literally. These three young Hebrew men, probably no more than 20 years of age, find themselves on the wrong side of the king's anger. They are arrested and threatened with death, all because they will not violate their allegiance to God. In refusing to bow down before the golden statue, they oppose the royal edict and must suffer the consequences. In uh, Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of God. What do you think they would be feeling as that they were being dragged before the king, guys, before they were thrown into the furnace? Do you think they were afraid or do you think they felt overwhelmed, discouraged, or downcast? And what about when they were bound and brought to the furnace? Do you think they questioned if that would be the end? Have you ever felt this way or been asked those questions in your life? Have you ever felt tossed into the fire? If you're like me, that answer would certainly be yes. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as faithful as they were, are not kept from the fiery furnace. 
There was no grand display of divine might that would protect them from this experience. The three men were arrested. They were bound and they were tossed into a furnace. I'm sorry to say this, but there may be times when we are asked to face a fiery furnace. There may be a season where life seems to turn against us and where everything that we once knew feels ripped away. Guys, Israel was not immune to this. The church hasn't been immune to it. The disciples were not immune from this. Jesus was not immune from this. If we think that our faith in God means that such things don't occur in our lives, then we will be left feeling condemned when these things do befall us. We will feel that our fear or our discouragement or our uh, disappointment somehow betrays the fullness of our faith. Guys, this is not true. The truth upon which we stand is not that God shelters us from all struggles, but that God's love remains with us during those times. God is present within the flames. Our times of hardship and struggle speak not of God's absence. In fact, these are the times when God draws incredibly near. True, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego aren't saved from entering the furnace, but they are surrounded by the flames. It was in that oven, and not a moment before, that they meet the presence of the one who peers like the Son of God. God dwells amid the fire, guys. God incarnates God's self in the flames. And it is because God is present in that place that the power of God extends over the three men, and the flames had no power over them. God's response to the fiery furnaces of our lives isn't to destroy us, but to dwell in us. This is what is shown in this beloved book of Daniel. More importantly, this is what is revealed on the cross. The cross testifies that there is no place where the loving power of God will not be present. The cross, which is the most extreme example of the world's rejection, is transformed into the place where Christ's relentless love is disclosed. It hurts when we find ourselves in the fire. It hurts when we have been greatly disappointed or let down. It is fearful and dark, yet we are not alone Christ enters that darkness and bears that hurt. There is no place in our lives where Christ is not present. Jesus promises, Surely I am with you to the very end of the age, Matthew twenty-eight twenty. If you find yourself overwhelmed by struggles or stresses, simply repeat this truth. In fact, try inserting your name at the start of the verse as a way to hear this declaration spoken directly over you. I pray that you know the presence of the one who journeys with you. Let's keep our eyes opened to the presence of our Savior as he stands with us and extends his power over us. Guys, just know that darkness cannot overcome the light. John 1, five says, And the light shineth in in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I know of no great Christian leader who hasn't faced a fiery trial in life. Guys, we are going to face opposition as we seek to do God's will. But the truth is that darkness does not have the power to overcome light. Every believer can overcome any attack if they won't quit first. Darkness does not have the ability to suppress or to hold the light under its domain. This doesn't mean that darkness won't attempt to over, overcome the light. However, its efforts will be frustrated and unsuccessful because the light of God always prevails, even in what seems to be the darkest or bleakest situation. Darkness simply doesn't have the power or ability to put out God's light. Since you and I are a child of the light, 
as found in Ephesians 5, 8. This means darkness does not have the ability to put out our light either. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The word overcometh is a Greek word, nikos. It means to conquer. It was used to portray athletes who had gained the mastery of the competition and ultimately reigned supreme as champions over the games. The Holy Spirit was careful in his selection of this Greek word, nikos. This word communicates vivid images that pertain to our walk of faith and victory. First, it tells us that when we begin the walk of faith, we enter into a real life competition. The decision to walk by faith puts it puts us right smack dab in the center of the ring where the contest immediately begins. This is so important to understand because too often we wrongly presume that if we walk by faith, we will be removed from all problems. But our faith puts us directly opposite the devil's powers. He hates our faith because he knows what it can do. For this reason, Satan may try to go for a knockout punch, but even if he knocks us flat, he can't keep us down on the ground. In 2 Corinthians 4, 9, the apostle Paul testified to this when he said that he was cast down but not destroyed. Those who are born of God have the supernatural ability to keep getting up again, no matter how many times they fall. Remember, John wrote, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Because the word overcometh is the Greek word nikos, it tells us that we are the ultimate champions and describes our superior position as children of God over the world. We are fully armed. We are heavenly armed with everything we need to be super conquerors in this life, even to conquer the feelings of letdown and disappointment because the rapture hasn't happened yet. Satan, as a god of this world, as we would see in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, tries his best to use the world around us to do battle against us. But regardless of what weapon Satan uses or how he attempts to combat you and me, 1 John 5, 4 declares that we have a faith that overcomes the world. This means we have a faith that overrides and supersedes any organization, any event, any circumstance, or any difficult dilemma Satan would try to employ against us. He may be the God of this world, but we have a weapon so powerful that we can shoot him down every time he shows up uninvited. John 1, 5 makes it absolutely clear that darkness does not have the ability to suppress or to hold the light under its domain. Darkness may try to prevent the light from shining, but it never holds back the light permanently. Eventually, it always comes shining through. This is true of you and me and your hopes and dreams and visions and calling as well. You may feel hindered from time to time in your attempts to fulfill the call God has given you, but don't despair. Those hindrances cannot last long. They cannot last forever. The only way the devil can steal your dream vision or calling is if you surrender to him first. If you hold on and refuse to give up, your faith will overcome every encumbrance the devil tries to set in your path. Guys, let's let this be our prayer for the day. Lord, when we feel overwhelmed by fiery furnaces, open our eyes to see you with us. Help us to feel the comforting balm of your presence as you uphold our life. We thank you, Lord, that darkness 
does not have the power to overcome us. It may try, but your word guarantees that darkness doesn't have the ability to overcome the light. We are so thankful that we are your children and that we live on the, on the winning side. When the devil tries to discourage us, help us remember that in the end, we win. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, let's make a confession of faith for this very day. We boldly confess that even if we get knocked down, we never get knocked out. We possess the supernatural ability to keep getting up again because we are born of God and we overcome the world. Regardless of what weapon Satan uses or how he attempts to combat us, our faith overrides and supersedes any event, any circumstance, any disappointment, and any difficult dilemma Satan would try to employ against us. We declare this so in Jesus' name. Guys, no matter what life throws at us, let's remain standing Jesus strong. We really are going to rapture out of here at any time. Don't lose heart. One day, really soon, all your tears will be wiped away for all eternity. When I'm feeling weakness on any given day, I will find strength in the Holy Spirit and in God's Word, and I want you to do the same. Guys, I'll be playing that reposted prophetic word just right after this. I pray that you're encouraged. It encouraged me. But I just want to say this. It all remains true. We fly soon. God bless each and every one of you and Maranatha. I sense the Spirit of the Lord speaking to my heart and saying, My wings of protection hover over you in this hour. What you felt would come to destroy you will disappear before it finds you. I have worked out all of the details. Stumbling blocks are being removed. Snares will spring upon the enemy instead. Be wise among your days. Be diligent in your actions. Be sensitive to my still, small voice. What you have been waiting for is surely on the horizon. Your time in waiting will be nothing but a forgotten memory soon. Come and gaze into my glory. I will give unto you new eyes, my eyes, that will give you true understanding. I call you to look through my eyes, says the Lord. When you look through my eyes, the world around you will change. When you see the sick, I see them healed. When you see the lost, I see them saved. When you see darkness approaching you, I see the enemy defeated. And when I look at you, I see you completed, made whole, and beautiful with nothing, absolutely nothing lacking. When you see ashes, I see beauty. When you see limitations, I see miracles. When you look upon heartache and pain, I see future breakthrough and deliverance. When you begin to look with my eyes, you will see everything will begin to change. When you see yourself struggling, I see you as a conqueror. When you see your failures, I see you victorious and your wilderness of life blossoming like a rose. Anoint your eyes with love. My love, says the Lord. Love is the healing I have. And then you will see the sunrise even in the greatest of darkness. Come to me and I will cause you to clearly see the day in which you are living. Though many are seeing doom, I see glory. When many see devastation, I see my power bringing deliverance. I see the end from the beginning. When you look through my eyes of love, you will see things as they truly are. Crooked things will straighten. Weak and feeble people will strengthen with power. I call you to come before me and gaze upon me. Can I not turn your sorrow into dancing? 
I am well able to turn your heart to overflowing. I am well able to turn your darkness into light. This is how those called by my name will live and move and speak. I will complete the good work I had begun in you until all of you are consumed in me. I will show you the secrets of what is to come. I give you this day true vision that springs from revelation and understanding. Your eyes will be anointed to see beyond the moment and call things that are are not as though they were. I have given you this gift of discerning grace that you might bring hope where others have lost courage. As surely as you have seen great change in this world, there is another change that is yet to come so very, very, very soon. You will be changed in a moment's time, in the twinkling of an eye, and so shall you be with your God and Savior throughout all eternity. My coming is very close at hand, and I will not delay. Do not fear the threats and storms of your enemy. Just know your enemy is underneath my feet, and he is a defeated foe, thus says the Lord God. I want to thank each of you so much for joining with me for today's video. But I want to ask a very important question. Are you saved? If you're not saved and would like to know Jesus as your Savior, know this. Today is the day for your salvation. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Just know that today is the day. Guys, there is no do-it-yourself salvation. No one's works will ever get them to heaven. The word of faith says, Confess with your mouth Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. And that's according to Romans 10, uh, verse 9. Guys, salvation is so simple. It doesn't take works. It doesn't take faithful church attendance. It doesn't take sacrificial offerings. It is not hard. In fact, salvation is so simple that anybody with a mouth and a heart can have it. If it took works, many people couldn't do it. If it took a certain level of intellect, Some people could never achieve it. If you have never received this free gift of salvation, you can do so today by praying this prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, you said in your word, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and that he was raised from the dead. I am calling upon his name the name of Jesus. I now confess Jesus as my Lord. So I know, Father, that according to your word, I am now saved. Thank you, Father, for giving me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, A miracle just happened. God swapped your human righteousness for the perfect divine righteousness of his son Jesus. God now sees you as spotless and blameless. In his eyes, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have 
become new. You have received the free gift of salvation and it will never be taken away from you. Welcome to the family of God. Come on.